Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm Pastor Sam and I'm so glad you joined me on the program today. I believe God has something special for you. You know, here we are in the last week of 21 days of prayer and fasting. We've been praying over your needs. I would like for you one more time, if you have a special need, regardless of what it is, if you would just simply call us and give us the opportunity to agree with you and to come together in prayer over the most urgent need that you have in your life. Here's what you got to do. Call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. Or you can write to me at Victory Tabernacle, 11700 Genito Road, Midlothian, Virginia, 23112. Here's the last way. Contact us on the web, victorytab.org. That's all you have to do and then you can get your prayer request to us. I promise you in this last week of our fast, we're going to intensify our prayer. We're going to believe God for great and mighty things and for miracles, and God has a miracle with your name on it. So again, get in touch with us, and when you do, because we appreciate your being there, we're going to send to you a ministry gift absolutely free. Again, the number to call one more time is 804-744-8881. This is the last installment in a series that I did on God Knows Where You Are. And today, I want you to know that regardless of what you do, where you've been, what you're going through, God knows right where you are and He loves you and He wants to help you. So let's go together into a service that the, already in progress and the power of God is at work. And I'm speaking on the subject, God Knows Where You Are. Several years ago, I got to the point where I felt like I had made a wrong turn. And there was no way to get back at the center of the will of God for my life. I just felt like something bad had happened and I couldn't recoup. I couldn't, I couldn't, it, it's like, and you guys will know what this is about. You ever had the breath knocked out of you and you just can't seem to, <gasps> that's how I felt spiritually. Well, the church was growing, good things were happening, but I was miserable. My mom and dad at that time were living down in Georgia with my, my youngest sister. She and her husband pastored a church in Dawsonville. And I told Don, I said, look, let's just, let's just get in the car and drive down there. I want to see mom and daddy. I haven't seen them in a while. And she said, okay, that'd be nice. We'd just take a road trip. So she, knew, she, she knows when I'm in a funk. She knows better than anybody. Because see, I can work my stuff out and get up here and, and you think, man, he never is down. But she knows when I am. And I do. Sometimes I get down. Sometimes she gets down. Thank God it's not at the same time. You know, because there's one there to lift the other up. But I was just really down. And I said, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how, how we're going to do this. How, we, how am I going to get back to where I need to be? And so we went down, and she said, well, maybe if you could see your mom and dad, it, it would help. So we're driving down there, and I see a sign on the road that says Rome, Georgia. Now, that's where I, I guess I call that home more than any place else, because I wasn't raised up. I was jerked up. And, and we never lived in one place. The longest we ever lived in one place growing up was five years, and that was in Rome. I said, I won't go back there. And I just pulled off the interstate. She said, okay, that'll, maybe that'll help you. I said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to that place where I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And then I'm going to go to that place where I preached my first sermon. And something's going to happen. So we went, and things had changed a lot in 40 years, you know. So, 40 plus, really. So I'm driving into town. I don't recognize hardly anything. A few streets, I, I, but I know Broad Street. That's the main street. I said, I'm going to go downtown. But I said, 
first of all, let's stop by the church where I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And they built a new church. But the old church they had turned into Sunday school rooms. So I went to the uh, receptionist. I said, I used to go to this church a long time ago. And I would like very much, if you don't mind, to go in there and find the place where the altar used to be. And I just want to pray a while, if it's okay. He said, oh, that's fine, that's fine. And, and I, re I remember going in there and finding the way down to a, a Sunday school room. And it was built right by a window that had the, our family's name. They had, we'd, we'd bought one of those stained glass windows. So that's about the only thing that was familiar. I said, well, I know the altar was about right here. And I got on my knees and I said, God, I want you to speak to me. Do you know where I am? Have you forgotten all about me? I feel so cold inside and I just need you to renew me. And nothing happened. I said, oh my, better go somewhere else. I went on down the road and I preached my first sermon in front of the Piggly Wiggly. Some of you know what a Piggly Wiggly is, don't you? Do they still have Piggly Wigglies? Or they, they do. They're saying no, you're saying yes. I'll go with you. Because I preached my first sermon in front of the Piggly Wiggly. I was a bag boy there and the man said, I, I asked him if I could preach in front of his, because they wouldn't let me preach at church because I'd never preached before. And uh, I said, well, I want to preach out. And that's before you had to get a permit for anything. And a friend of mine hooked up his guitar, the amplifier, and he was, uh, he was like uh, George Beverly Shea, and I was Billy Graham. And he started singing. And we got up a crowd because we got singing so loud, and we were so bad that people came up. And uh, so I opened the Bible, and I was going to preach. And I, I got, you know, I got uh, cotton mouth. Don't you hate it when a preacher gets that, looks like mayonnaise in the corner of his mouth? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I know. It's like, oh, God, Jesus, help them, please, Lord. You know, and they get excited because their mouth's dry. I got that. And I, I had 15 pages of notes I had written by hand the night before, and, and they all blew down the street. I didn't have anything then. And I said, God, help me. And I, I just said, well, look, I know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I just briefly gave a testimony how Christ had come into my heart. And I, I prayed and looked up and three of the boys I played high school football with were right there on their knees in front of me. And, and that was the first time I ever preached. And I thought, if I can go back there, I'll just stand right there where I preached my first sermon and I'll feel the power of God. They tore it down. Can you believe it? I thought there would be a monument there that said, Sam Luke preached his first sermon right here. They tore it down. There was something else there, but it wasn't a Piggly Wiggly. I couldn't even find where I stood. I said, I guess it's out there somewhere. My goodness, 40 years, things change. What do you expect? So we went downtown, and my wife loves these flea market stores, antique stores. And there was a nice home cooking restaurant there. I said, Let's eat here. That'll be good. That'll make a fellow feel good. You get some good old collard greens and pork chops and stuff like that. So we, <laughs> we ate. You notice how much I talk about food because we're fasting? I just can't help it. And so we, we ate. And I'm still not feeling anything. Forty years passed. And my wife said, Oh, look over there at that antique store. I said, Oh, goody she said I've got to go in there I said okay I'll just sit right here on this bench okay so I'm sitting there feeling sorry for myself saying God where are you God I don't feel any different than I did up in Michigan I, I, I was hoping I could get down here and, and revisit some of these places where I had an encounter with you and it would change things but it's like you don't even know where I am have you forgotten about me? And I'm sitting there feeling sorry for myself on the, on the, the um, park bench smoking a cigarette. No, not really. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just see if you were listening. And I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting there, and the Holy Ghost says, look up. You ever had him do that to you? The Holy Ghost said, look up. And I looked up, and this fella was walking down the street with this book under his arm. 
and God said, watch it. And he's coming all the way down the street, crossed over, side I was on, started walking, walked right behind me. And when he walked right behind, I felt the Spirit of God on me and God said, follow him. So I got up and started following the guy. He goes in to the antique store where my wife is. And he's got this, this book. And he goes into the antique store, walks in the front door, and I could tell he was accustomed to everything there. And they, they knew him. He walks in. There's a table right there at the front. And he puts this book down and it opens up and he keeps walking, goes to the back of the store. So I'm right behind him. The Holy Ghost said, look over there. Now this is a stranger. He's got a book. He puts it on a table and now the Holy Ghost is telling me to look at it. So I walk over there and look down into that book and I've been gone 40 plus years from that town. And this is what I saw. Put it up there. I'm staring back at me from 40 years ago, 40 plus. I'm seven, 16 in that, in that picture. And it's a full page in this book right here. This is my high school senior yearbook. I grabbed that book up and went back there where that guy was standing. He was talking to the owner. I didn't know it was the owner. My wife was over there. And I opened up and said, you know this guy? And he looked at him, he looked at me, he said, looks like you without wrinkles. <laughs> I said, that is me. And he started laughing. He said, what a coincidence. He said, I provide stuff for this antique store. He said, I usually bring in a lot of stuff. Most of the time I'll bring it in in a truck. But he said, today the only thing I had to bring in was this book. And so I brought it in. Now, what are the chances of him walking down the street in front of me 43 years after the day while I'm sitting there feeling like God doesn't know where I am? He puts a book on a table that opens up on its own to my picture staring at me. I said, I'm buying this. Brand new. 40 plus years, brand new. I bought it. Now let me tell you the rest of the story. I went on down to preach in Dawsonville where my dad and mom were going to church. And I told that story on a Sunday morning just like this. And I, when I got to that point where I was talking about God knows where you are, a lady jumped up and ran to the altar and her whole family right behind her, two little girls and her, and her husband, and they're all crying and piled up in the altar. And I thought, what in the world? Because <laughs> I had no clue what I had said. But when they came, other people started coming, and we had one of those crying services where everybody just seeking God, and we'll sort it all out later. So I just said, i got to stay around and find out what happened. About 45 minutes later, this lady stands up, and she calls a little girl, and her little girl comes up, and she's got a high school yearbook. I said, what happened? She said, we've lost our home. We've both lost our jobs. We were about to lose our marriage. We've been in the depressed state for weeks. We came to church thinking we're going to try one last time. If this doesn't work, we're going to give it all up and quit. People know us, but they don't know how desperate we've been. Because we got all of our stuck stuff together and moved into a motel room. Last night, unbeknownst to me, one of my little girls found the yearbook and brought it with her to church this morning. I didn't even know she had it. And while you were telling your story... She opened up the yearbook and said, Mama, is that you? 
And the Holy Ghost said, I know where you are too. Oh! <laughs> Revival broke out. Stand up with me and give God praise this morning. God knows where you are. He saw you when you were crying and said, God, I don't know how I can make it. He knew about you when that pain was shooting through your body. He knew what was going on when the person that said, I won't leave you, I'll never leave you, I'll be by your side, I'll love you till we die, turned and walked away and better dealed you. He was right there when your heart was broken in a thousand pieces. He knows what you're going through. Now listen, He loves you so much that He has come to you at your point of need today to breathe on you and to give you clear direction. You might need forgiveness. You might need a refilling of the Holy Ghost. You might need restoration. You might need to have your eyes washed out with tears so you can see. But He knows where you are. If you need Him today, bow your head right now as I pray. Father, we are desperate for you. We know where you are. You said your name is Jehovah Shema. I am the Lord God Almighty and I choose to dwell among my people. You love us. You're here for us. And you brought us in because you love us. It wasn't just to be religious. It wasn't just because it's a weekly ritual. But you've been looking for us. We've kind of been like Adam and Eve and we've been hiding out. And even when we come to you, we, we hide our hearts and our thoughts because we were afraid to, to open up because we're afraid of what people might think. We're afraid to pour out our heart. We're afraid to expose our heart because we've been hurt so many times and become disillusioned. But you've never not for a moment taken your loving eyes off of us. And you came to seek and to save that which was lost. Call me now. All you have to do is call 804-744-8881. Again, that's 804-744-8881. I want to hear from you. Please share with me what God's done in your life. And then if you have a special need, and I'm sure you do, let us know about it because we have one week left in our 21 days of prayer and fasting and we're going to agree together and believe God when we pray and fast that God will meet the most urgent need you have in your life. So you can call us at 804-744-8881 or you can write to us at Victory Tabernacle, 11700 Genito Road, Midlothian, Virginia, 23112. Or you can contact us by going to victorytab.org. Thank you so much. I appreciate the fact that you're there. In fact, when you call or write to us, I'm going to send to you free and postpaid a special ministry gift. So be sure to do that today. Once you're saved, you need a right church. I mean the right church. I, when I say the right church, I'm not talking about any church. I'm talking about a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. Victory Tabernacle has a special celebration every Sunday. We call it a praise celebration, and it begins at 10 o'clock, and you're invited to be a part of it. Come and worship with us. 
It begins at 10 o'clock, two full hours of praise and worship ministry from the Word and always a time together in His presence around the altar. And don't forget, the last Sunday of every month is our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in our chapel. And God is confirming His Word, mighty signs and wonders and miracles. On Wednesday evening, you can find us here in our Family Enrichment Night Service. We have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens called Battle Cry, and a special ministry to those who are college and career age, and it's called The Vine. I'll be teaching in the main sanctuary, but you'll enjoy Wednesday evening. It's a time of intensified training, and it's also a time of great fellowship. It's fun, it's exciting, it's relevant, so be sure to join us. It starts at seven o'clock, and 8.30, we're walking out the door. I mentioned earlier our website, victorytab.org. When you go there, check out Ustream. Ustream is uh, something that would interest you because if you're unable to be with us in person, every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, you can click on Ustream and watch us live on the internet. Also, you'll see another button there, and it's for Victory Battle Cry Radio. It's a 24-hour uh, radio, uh, internet radio uh, network, and you can listen to it. I've listened to it in foreign countries. Everywhere I've been, you just, you know, I've got an app on my phone, and you can listen to inspirational singing and music and gospel teaching and preaching 24 hours a day. So be sure to check that out while you're there. Well, thanks again for joining us on the program. And until we're together again, just like this, remember, this is Pastor Sam telling you that in the Bible, the, the Bible declares that faith comes by hearing the Word. Here at Victory Tabernacle, faith is active and alive, and miracles still happen. I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your hand leading the way. Can't make it without you, not for one day. I need your mercy. I need. I need your mercy, I need your grace, I need your hands leading the way, can't make it without you, not for one day, I need your mercy.
down his head. 